Hi. In this video, I want to slightly modify our glid material function to make it work with simple planes and more complex meshes. If you don't have glint yet, please follow the arrow where you can watch full tutorial how to create one. So, as for the example, I just added this plane and the more complex 3D mesh. And here is our glint material function. So, for the plane, I have a really simple material like this where we will add glint for the testing. Now we can open our glint. So in the last tutorial about glint, I was using texture coordinates to create our glint. So if I will enable plane, we can preview it, how it works. But it will work only on a simple plane or in UI. If I would apply now on this mesh, because it's based on UVs only, and these UVs are facing different directions, so it doesn't look nice. So this is what we will add. Okay, so let's start the meshes. To make it based on the meshes, we will get world position, then we will get object position, then subtract, and we can connect all of these dots. You can see that our line is already working much better. But we're using here this range, minimum and maximum, just between minus one and one, and it's definitely not enough on the mesh. And plus, as I said, I won't make it work with the planes, but at the same time with the more complex meshes. So I want to put switch, so I can then switch between this and this. Now same we need to do with the range. So I will grab our static switch in here, but instead of having now two static switches per scalar parameter, we can use just one and use it with a lerp. So I will duplicate lerp instead. And now this one, it will be for our just UV coordinates. So it will go to false. And this one will go to true. So let's put it on top. Add a UV range. This will be mesh. So for the mesh, I want it to be minus three hundred and three hundred. So now we have UV range and we have switch for 3D mesh. So if I will tick that, see my UV range disappeared, but now we have mesh range. But it should work anyways. Why we don't see it? Because it's actually this line must be thicker. I will remove delay so we don't need to wait two seconds for the testing. Free speed. By that way, decreasing actually speed. Yep, so it's working. As we have this slider, so it goes between 0 and 1, but nothing stops you, just click on it, and let's say put 5, and you will create much thicker line. Okay, so this is working. In the previous videos, I was showing, okay, if we want to add glint, we need to use it as a mask. So we need like LERP, we need connected to alpha, then we have this one here, then creating color, right? We're connecting color and something like that. And then why we need to do this every time in material, 
if we always need to do it. We can just do it here in our material function. So first let's add color. Let's set by default to white. Larp. Then we need input. This will be vector free because it's a color. So it could be texture or it could be just color. And we will connect it here. So it's same what I was doing here, but it will be directly in here. And if I will save now, go back to material. See, now I have input. Actually, let's name it. So name it so you will remember. Is it color? Is it base color like here? If you see name is not updated, you can just delete and add again. So now instead of again creating LARP and anything, I can just get this glint in there and connect or emissive because it should actually glow. Or even if I will connect to base color, you can see now it's working on my plane. So now it means every time you will need glint in your material, you just dropping it here, connecting, and it works. Maybe I want glint only on my GAN. And of course, like it applies now on all this background as well. So what we can do, we can just like multiply our glint. So let's connect this one to base color. And as I said, like I want glint maybe in emissive so it can glow. And connect this. So what I'm doing now, I'm grabbing alpha from the our gun, which means only gun will be white and multiplying by white, so it only will be applied on that. And now it's only glint we have on the gun. Now in this stand we have no error because it says unit input something. And we can do the same. So we can input. Or for example, as we had here some emissive, we can connect emissive. In a glint color, instead of just having it white, you can add scalar parameter font intensity or inside of the color where you see this V, just add value larger. As you can see now it's close. The same pretty much in here, you can control that. I want to group everything, so then when again we adding glint, it's in a proper group instead of this global scalar parameter. So let's start maybe with our static parameter. And now we have all glint parameters in one place. And it doesn't matter what material you will add, you will have always them separate from the material. And this way, now it will work with more complex shapes and with really plain shapes. So it definitely will simplify our life in the future. I would like to say thank you to my all supporters. I appreciate your support. Thank you for your generosity. You can join our growing Discord community, where we like to discuss UFN tips and tricks, showcase our work and help each other. You can find link in the description or in the channel header. You can get project files on my Patreon or just buy me a coffee to support me. If you are interested in learning more about UFN materials, coding, widget UI and more, feel free to subscribe and click that bell icon to get notifications when new videos will be released. See you soon.